Well, shit. I know what you're all thinking. That motherfucker is ugly as hell. <laughs> now, yeah, this is what I look like. If you couldn't tell from my logo on my screen, this is what I look like, and you're gonna be seeing this face a lot now. Which is definitely a little uncomfortable for me, because, like, you know, I'm a director, I'm a writer, I try being behind the camera. I don't particularly like being in front of the cameras, but there are some reasons for why I'm going to be showing this face in a lot of videos. And the main reason is because of this, uh, monetization. It's this little thing on YouTube where you gotta make money from your YouTube videos, right? You gotta put ads of your videos and my formatting of videos where I do this whole thing of putting clips of movies and TV shows as I review them well guess what that gets copyright claimed I don't make any money you know so when I have a video that does really really well uh, the companies that made the movies that I use the footage for make the money so now I'm gonna make the money because why not? So yeah, get used to my face, you're gonna be seeing a lot of it. Also, before I start this video, I just wanna plug my own movie. I did make a movie called Creature. It's on YouTube right now. The link is on your screen. It's a small production, but I did put a lot of work into it, so go check it out. But this video is going to be the most anticipated TV shows of the year. Now, there are a lot of TV shows I'm looking forward to this year, and I wanna talk about each and every one of them in this video. Before I start, I just wanna say that I know I'm gonna miss some shows. I'm sure there's some stuff that I'm either forgetting or that I just don't care about that you probably care about, which is fine. So let me know down below what I missed, and uh, yeah, yeah, maybe I'll read the comment or maybe I'll ignore it, but either way, comment it down below. First up is Arcane Season 2. Now, this is a show that I've been waiting a very long time for. We got Arcane Season 1, I don't know, it's got to be about three or four years ago at this point. It just randomly dropped this big, beautiful animated show on Netflix that I believe takes place in the universe of League of Legends or World of War. Please don't kill me for that. It takes place in one of those games, but either way, the show is fucking fantastic. It's an amazing show that follows these two sisters from their childhood to where they are today. It deals with politics, it deals with magic, there's a bunch of weird shit going on in the world. We don't have a look at season two yet, but I do know that it's coming this year, and it is well overdue, and I am very excited to see Netflix do another big animation thing. It seems like the one thing that Netflix is pretty good at is animated shows, movies, whatever. They're pretty good at it, and I'm excited to see what they got in season two of Arcane. And number nine is True Detective Night Country. Now, True Detective is a very, very weird show. On the one hand, you have season one, which is arguably the best piece of television we've seen in a very, very long time. It's amazing. You get Matthew McConaughey, Woody Harrelson, got a weird bromance going on. Matthew McConaughey says a bunch of hilariously stupid shit. I don't sleep. I just dream. But then you get two seasons that are just not very good at all. I mean, season three was okay with Mahershala Ali, but season two... Dumpster fire. It's not very good. But now we have season four, or like this weird spin off season that's gonna be starring Jodie Comer, and it looks to be kind of like Fargo? It's a weird murder mystery that's taking place in this winter area, this snow. It looks creepy and I'm down for it. Now, I'm a little bit worried because, yeah, the last couple seasons of this show you know, didn't really work out, but you know what? You know what? I have enough faith in the people writing it, the people directing it, and Jodie Comer, of course, she's amazing, that I think this is gonna be pretty good, and I, I have some high hopes. And number eight, and I can't believe I'm ranking it this low, but it's Silo Season 2. Silo was a huge surprise from last year. One of the biggest surprises as a whole. It was an amazing TV show that had this incredible mystery. It's centered on this post-apocalyptic world in which all these people are living inside this silo. There's a corruption scheme. It almost kind of, like, mirrors our political systems and our government and the corruption happening in our world. It's kind of beautiful. I love it. But the show's mystery kind of built up similar to something like Lost. It kind of gave me those vibes of something that I haven't seen in TV in a while. And I really loved it. And they're making season two really, really fast. I actually think it's already shot. Rebecca Ferguson's back. The whole cast is back. Common. Common is in the show. He's awesome. And I'm excited for this to come back. Apple TV's killing it. And this is maybe the best show they have. But also coming from Apple TV at number seven, we have Severance season two. And yeah, Severance is well overdue for a second season. It's now been two years. That show ended on a crazy cliffhanger. It's not a big budget crazy show, so I don't know what's taking so long. I know there's a lot of issues apparently behind the scenes. I've heard it's in like production hell, but I do think it's finished filming or at least it's almost done filming. And yeah, I'm excited. It's a great show. The first season was so surprising and so unique. And what, whatever they do in season two, I'm going to be here for it because that was a cliffhanger that was definitely worth waiting for a next season. Like, it made it wait, uh, worth the wait, hopefully. I'm excited to see the whole cast back, and I just hope it gets crazier and weirder, and I'm down for it. And number six, can't believe I'm ranking this at number six, but The Bear Season 3. Bear Season 2, second best show of last year. Why is The Bear Season 3 only number six? Well, because the five shows I ranked ahead of it. I think I'm just a little bit more excited for it because of my personal bias here. But yeah, since Succession is over, The Bear is now kind of like the best show on TV at the moment. So of course, I'm going to be excited for the next season, and I think it's coming out next year. I know they're going into production very soon. Uh, this seems like it's going to be a yearly released show on Hulu. And yeah, it's going to be amazing when it comes out. I'm looking for more cameos. I'm looking for some more Jeremy Allen White screaming like, Hey, cousin! Like, I'm just, I'm fucking down for it, man. I don't know anything about cooking or chefing shit up, but this show makes me want to be a chef. 
although I would be terrible at cooking. And number five is Fallout. I love the trailer for this and the fact that Jonathan Nolan, the brother of Christopher Nolan, who co-writes every single Christopher Nolan movie, the fact that he is the head of this, he is the main mastermind behind this show, I'm excited to see it. Fallout is one of the best game series, in my opinion, and one of the best series that I think should be adapted into something live action. It's just very adaptable. It's a big world with interesting characters, interesting things going on in it. And I really dug the trailer for this, and I'm really excited to see if Amazon actually invested in it, and they allowed for Jonathan Nolan to make something really special, to make the best nuclear project that a Nolan brother has ever made. Probably not. And number four is, of course, Stranger Things Season 5, the final season of Stranger Things. It's probably coming out this year, I, I think. Maybe. Unless we get another strike that delays it another year. Because this show seems to be getting delayed over and over and over. By the time it's finished, the actors are going to be in their 40s. That's just how it's going to be. These guys that were like 12 when the show started, probably going to be like 30, 40 years old. Like, it's taking so long. But of course, Season 4 of Stranger Things was the best season of the show. It really set the bar extremely high for what will be an action-packed final season of great storytelling, great writing. The characters are coming together. There was a big cliffhanger. Uh, uh, Max might be dead. Probably not, but she might be. We had some big reunions at the end of season four. We had some big reveals. We had that villain who's awesome, that weird dude that was actually human, but became like, you know what I'm talking about. I'm forgetting his name at the moment, but that big fucking monster, you know, Darth Sidious motherfucker. Like that dude is awesome. And I'm excited to see him come back. There's just so much riding on this season. And I think it's going to live up to the hype when it actually finally, maybe, probably gets made. And number three is a personal pick, The Walking Dead, The Ones Who Live. Now I know what you're thinking. How the fuck can I rank The Walking Dead over The Bear, over Stranger Things? Well, I, I don't know if you can see over there, you know, I got a Walking Dead poster up there. I got another one over here that you can't see. I love The Walking Dead. It's one of my favorite shows ever. I'll admit that a lot of it is shit. A lot of it is absolute shit. It is. But listen, I love it. I love every second of it. And back a few years ago, they wrote off a character. His name was Rick Rimes. He's the main character of the show. He got brought up into a helicopter and flown away. Sorry if that's a spoiler, but yeah, that happens. He gets flown away, and for what, four or five years now? We have no fucking idea where he went. We get ideas, little teases, but we have no idea where he went. And now, finally, we have a show that's gonna tell us where he went. And that, to me, is, is more exciting than literally anything else. Well, maybe not more exciting than the number two and number one spot, but it's very, very exciting to me. I don't know if the show's gonna be great, but I know at the very, very least, seeing Andrew Lincoln back as Rick Grimes, seeing Michonne come back, seeing all of these characters interact, seeing the world expand, and hopefully getting some mighty, mighty fine reunions. This excites me. I'm excited for the show. I'm gonna review it, and I'm gonna love it, even if it's terrible. Number two, yeah, it's The Last Airbender. I mean, come on. This is another show that I've been saying for years, we need a live-action remake of this. We need a live-action movie or TV series, and the answer I always get is, oh, we got one, and it was fucking terrible. Well, it was terrible, but do you know what else is terrible? M. Night Shyamalan. <laughs> Now, all respect to M. Night Shyamalan, I, I like a lot of his movies, I'm being a little too harsh. But he's made a lot of stinky films. The Last Airbender is one of them, and The Last Airbender wasn't a bad movie because this is source material that's not adaptable into live action. It was bad because M. Night Shyamalan just didn't understand what he was making. Just clear as day, it happens. And finally, we're getting a new version of this, a new attempt, and it's gonna be a TV series on Netflix with one of the biggest budgets a TV series has ever had, and that trailer... God dang, man, that trailer was something. Aang looks great, Sokka looks great, Katara looks great, Zuko looks great. They All the characters look exactly how I imagined them. The, the bending all looks cool, the cinematic scale of it all. Like, this is, like he would say, it's cinema. The whole thing just looks epic and beautiful and big, and I, I'm praying that it works. I'm praying that it does well. But number one for me, of course, it's gonna be House of the Dragon Season 2. I mean, come on, it's Game of Thrones, motherfucker. Come on, who's not excited for Game of Thrones? I love Game of Thrones. It's like one of the greatest things ever, in my opinion. I, just love every little ounce of Game of Thrones I can get my hands on. Yeah, the last season of the show was ass, but then they came out with House of the Dragon based on the based on the amazing Dance of the Dragon storyline from the Fire and Blood book that they released. And the Dance of the Dragons, this big civil war, is such a cool story. And the first season set it up so well, and now we're gonna get the war. We're gonna get dragons fighting. We're gonna get more politics, more drama, battling for the throne, family feuds, family trauma, kills, deaths, murder. Oh, it's so great. This is what I love. I love shows like this. This is with Succession ending and these big, you know, fighting for power shows, my the best one at least, coming to an end. This is what I like. We have this other one now. It's fighting for power. It's family drama. It's big, epic battles. The first season was one of the best seasons of TV I've ever watched in my life, and I expect the second season to be just as good. 
if not maybe even a little bit better. Now, if only George R. R. Martin could finish, you know, uh, The Winds of Winter. That would be nice, you know, so we can, you know, undo the ending of that shitty-ass show. Or the last season of that show. It's not a shitty show, but the last season was shit. But yeah, guys, that's it. Let me know what you think of my face. We're gonna go to the outro screen now. Make sure to like this and subscribe for more. Click on the video on your screen right now to watch my movie. I'll see you guys in the next one.